a show of force to Australia's north. American fighter jets take off from a British aircraft carrier as part of a flurry of exercises in the South China Sea. HMS Elizabeth is leading a strike group through the Indo-Pacific, including a Dutch warship, as part of greater missions by Western navies in the region. It's a reaction against China's growing power, but also the way China is using that power. I think that it behooves uh, all of us who are like-minded countries who support the idea of a free and open Indo-Pacific. We should be concerned about China's uh, aggressive actions, uh, not only in the South China Sea, uh, but elsewhere. Harry Harris has spent the past decade in the region as both a warrior and a diplomat. He's the former head of US Indo-Pacific Command, as well as the former US ambassador to South Korea. I characterize China's actions in the South China Sea as uh, building a great wall of sand. Uh, and uh, I still hew to that line today. A third of the world's shipping, or more than $4 trillion in trade, passes through these contested waters each year. US analysts estimate China's now cemented its hold over 27 contested strategic islands in the South China Sea as part of its claim to the so-called Nine Dash Line. The Nine Dash Line was held as uh, illegal uh, under the United Nations Tribunal on the Law of the Sea. And China believes that all of that is theirs and they treat it accordingly. And so we have these uh, conflicts, these flashpoints uh, that derive from uh, illegal behavior uh, by the Chinese uh, in the South China Sea. Far from backing down, China's ramping up the powers of its Coast Guard. The new law allows the Chinese maritime police to fire on foreign vessels in case of an intrusion into their territorial claims. I'm very concerned about this law, no? because uh, it might cause uh, miscalculations and accidents there. This month, China state-run media reported the nation's Coast Guard has the power to demand foreign ships declare certain cargoes when travelling through waters it claims threatening the prospect of interdiction and boarding of ships in waters deemed international by the United Nations. This is uh, incremental intimidation and coercion uh, from China. The real problem is that individual commanders on Chinese ships and aircraft can think that they're doing exactly what Xi Jinping wants by creating confrontation and escalation. And then you get things like pride, face and nationalism, that when uh, an event starts to happen, leaders find it hard to back down. It's part of a pattern of behaviour. In recent years, Chinese fishing militia and its Coast Guard vessels have attempted to intimidate the ships of ASEAN nations. That's pushed the Philippines back into the arms of the US recommitting to US forces on its soil. China Coast Guard, China Coast Guard. This is Indonesian Coast Guard calling you over. Non-aligned Indonesia has now begun building an American-funded Coast Guard base near critical shipping lanes. This is a significant move that the training center uh, in Batam uh, in engages the United States directly. Dewi Fortuna Anwar has advised two former vice presidents of Indonesia. I don't think that we can avoid saying that this is probably part of this uh, soft balancing uh, against China. China's foreign ministry declared last year it's not seeking a maritime empire in the South China Sea and it, quote, always treats its neighbours as equals. The fractures and the failures and the fissures and else. In August, US Vice President Kamala Harris visited Singapore and Vietnam right on China's doorstep to deliver a blunt message. We're going to speak up. We're going to speak up when there are actions that Beijing takes that threaten the rules-based international order. Australia is grappling with the prospect of a potential confrontation between its most important trading partner and vital military ally. Australia already hosts thousands of US Marines near Darwin, now President Biden is looking for other places to forward position his defence forces. When you look at that map, Southeast Asia is not likely to welcome a lot more US military presence. There's already an important function in Singapore, but that's not going to grow. 
Uh, the Philippines is a prospect, but the real place on the map that makes sense and which uh, would be a, a really proactive partner is Australia. And we're talking about naval presence and uh, naval facilities that enable that naval presence in Australia's north and west. It's not just Navy assets. Some defence analysts have raised the prospect of surveillance aircraft operating out of Australia's north coast as well as islands like Cocos Keeling in the Indian Ocean. Aerial surveillance is fundamentally important. That's really at the hinge of the Indo-Pacific and it's quite um, credible to think of that as a place that uh, the Quad Nations maritime patrol aircraft could operate out of. Defence analysts believe real-time intelligence could also be shared with ASEAN nations in a time of crisis. A crisis that could be caused by accident or strategic intent. The region, Australia and its allies are trying to figure out just how far Xi Jinping is willing to go to assert Chinese dominance of international waterways. I would argue that uh, China is overplaying its hand. I think that the recent behaviour of China is in fact counterproductive for China because it only again uh, fuels the inherent suspicions that already exist in Southeast Asia where anti-China and anti-Chinese sentiments uh, is never uh, too deeply buried. I think it's very important that we do everything that we can uh, to prevent an escalation uh, into open warfare with the PRC. I think no one wants that. It's the PRC's own bad behavior that demonstrates to others just how bad it is. And so they are their own worst enemy. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.